So I'm hoping that the power of labor can can start shedding a light on on true systemic corruption, on election fraud, and uh, and the need for election transparency, on basically every single level that need that that we need to see it on. And if that happens, and if this information is exposed, and it becomes widely and more publicly available, you know it. There, there, there is less excuse for uh, people to continue supporting, uh, you know, breadcrumb candidates like Joe Biden that are microscopically better than Donald Trump. All right, let's move to uh, the next story. This is a little bit of an old story, but I think it's important to cover and uh, I haven't had the opportunity to talk about it. Um, but uh, the DA in Louisville, Daniel Cameron, uh, not very liked because he wants to keep the, 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 uh, what the grand jury discussed in, uh, in private. He wants to keep that anonymous. He doesn't want to really talk about what happened with the grand jury after the Breonna Taylor uh, indictments and the sentencing where only one cop was sentenced and wasn't even sentenced for murder, was sentenced for wanton endangerment uh, because he accidentally fired at a different wall. Not even for shooting into the home of an innocent woman. An innocent black woman, and she was killed because the police fucked up. In other jobs, man, I... So, I worked in a lot of graphic design departments, right? That's what I went to school for. Uh, I'd, I'd still do that kind of work. And if I was to monumentally screw something up um, where someone's life was possibly in danger because of misinformation and this, that, and the third, if I was to do something that monumentally fucked up, uh, yeah, I'm going to be fired and I will probably never work in graphic design ever again. And you can substitute graphic design for virtually any other fucking job. If you're a teacher and you monumentally fuck up or one of your kids' lives are in danger, I'm pretty sure that ends your career as a teacher. Doctor, nurse, your career is in danger. It's only cops when they endanger people's lives and they kill innocent people, that they are awarded or given uh, sweetheart deals to keep up this illusion that the cops are here to protect and serve. Now, the cops have always been, historically speaking, there to protect the stuff of rich people. And when you get in the way of that, they will fucking kill you. And you have people like Daniel Cameron, who's another black guy, uh, as part of the DA's office, um, basically saying, yeah, that's fine. They made some case about, oh, the boyfriend was, the boyfriend was uh, shooting at, at the cops. Yeah, he shot at them because he thought somebody was breaking into their fucking house because you use a no-knock warrant, you dipshit. Imagine, if you will, you're dead asleep in the middle of the night. And then all of a sudden, three random dudes just bust into your house. And start opening fire when you try to come down to see who's there. First of all, why is this even a tactic that's used by the police? And then when you accidentally kill an innocent person, you don't go, yeah, that's a major oversight in our department and we need major fucking reforms because we fucked up monumentally. We're going to fire these officers. We're going to fire the people that, you know, were responsible for approving this thing. And we're going to figure out what went wrong and go after the right people. And how is the next piece of that conversation not, well, it seems like your department's overfunded only to fuck up and kill innocent people.
There is a whole movement calling for police transparency, and Daniel Cameron, black DA in Louisville, is basically like, nah, fuck y'all. Uh, there's an activist by the name of Tamika Mallory who basically compared uh, Daniel Cameron to the black people that used to sell slaves to white people. Because he is uh, letting the black community of Louisville down that fucking much. That, that this lady is like, yeah, that's what, you, that's what you sound like. You sound like a black person selling your people uh, into slavery. And Uncle Tom. That's, I mean, that's heavy, right? Like, how do you listen to that? How do you listen to the pleas of, of the black community in, in Louisville, Breonna Taylor's family, all the people that are protesting out in the streets? How do you, how do you look at all of that and still go, nah, fuck everybody? The establishment is what the establishment is, and we gonna do what we gonna do, and uh, uh, we're we're gonna we're gonna, you know, give these people these small minor sentences for for illegally murdering somebody. By the way, murder is legal if you have a badge, and there are people with big fucking law degrees that'll defend you. The big thing here is, um, if if you're if you're stating that this decision that you came to, to charge one officer out of three on wanton endangerment, a lesser charge than what uh, all three of these officers need to get, the all three of these officers need to be charged with murder, because that's what they did. Same thing with uh, the murder of George Floyd. He should not be getting some bullshit fucking lower charge. Uh, He should be getting a murder charge. Um, If you are the DA in Louisville and you're saying what the grand jury did was the right thing and we upheld law and order, uh, then prove it. Prove it. Prove that you did that. You can. The fact that you're keeping it anonymous is because... You know that what happened behind those closed doors was go up against a movement and the voice of the people. And if that information gets out there, then yeah, there will be some kind of revolt. There will be some kind of pushback. Because people are going to be pissed. And you can't accept that. So what do you do? You say, well, this is going to remain anonymous and trust us. That's so much of what the American government wants, right? That's so much of where their power comes from is just you trusting them. Just you putting faith and belief in them. That's where a lot of that power really comes from. When in reality, you can't. Okay, I'll trust you, but show us what happened. If we're supposed to trust you, then why, when the, when the sentence came out, immediately there was a curfew, and there was uh, the National Guard got, gets called into place before any of the protests began? Is it because you know what you did was fucked up? And you did the wrong thing. You went against the people. You did something that wasn't just. And you know that's going to piss off the people. And the people have every fucking right to be mad. Why is it that when you see these protests out there. And these people sit there 
that are against these protests will sit there and yell and scream and say, why are they out on the streets? They're disrespecting this and they're disrespecting they're disrespecting the police by protesting them and calling to defund them and this, that, and the third. It's a dangerous job. You know, they're, oh, they're all just rioters. They're disrespectful rioters. Look, they shouldn't be getting angry. Why, why are they not saying, you know, it's a disrespect to human life when police officers pull out their gun and shoot innocent people? Where's that fucking rationale? That's the most disrespectful thing you can do is to extinguish life for absolutely nothing. There's a fundamental misunderstanding of what the defund the police movement is all about. It's basically talking about like re- redefining what law enforcement is because I think law enforcement in this country was developed out of a bias, uh, a very anti-black bias, anti-brown and black bias, an anti-worker bias. Uh, It was pro-oligarchs, pro-rich people to protect their shit. And by the way, uh, cops coming out of slave patrols, you have to remember that to the plantation owners, to the proponents of slavery, to the rich white people that owned land in this country, um, slaves weren't people. They were property. They were stuff. So it's always been about protecting the things of rich people. So it's fundamentally changing that. It's fundamentally becoming more about, yes, law and order, right? But what does that mean? Yeah, if there's a homicide or some kind of violent situation, you should call the cops. You should call somebody that's trained to deal with violent situations. Training police to think that all situations are going to be violent situations leads to innocent people getting killed. Leads to people getting gunned down in the streets. You can reallocate that money into... um, into free ambulance rides when there's an emergency for when people need an ambulance for mental health services for domestic services for counseling services for better community based initiatives better police oversight committees all of those things you compartmentalize the job of what a police officer and a, 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 a person in law enforcement does. should have a guy with a gun conducting traffic, monitoring, uh, you know, um, speed limits, noise complaints. That's, why do you need someone with a gun to do that? This DA is, uh, you know, perpetuating all of those things. And he is contributing to demonizing an entire movement that's calling for transparency, that is calling for uh, re- restructuring the law enforcement agencies. So that we see less, you know, dead, innocent people of color on the streets that's really what it's about this is just this is just a guilty system proving that it's fucking guilty that's really what it's all about that's really all this has been proving Hey, what's up, everybody? Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed the content in this video, make sure you like, subscribe, and share. My content is highly suppressed because this is not topics of conversation that uh, that the corporate mainstream media really wants to 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 address here. So make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Uh, sign up for my email list. Uh, that way you'll get weekly uh, uh, emails with all of the podcasts and all of the videos that I put out there Um, and make sure you go to my website and follow me there uh, krishmohanhaha.com that's going to be your one stop shop for all things Krish Mohan that's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A dot com see you in the next video